Hi guys and gals, I am going to come cover how to create a Google Sheets data table and how to create a Google Sheets graph to put into your project. So as you see, Google Sheets starts out with rows, ones through one through 100, and then A through Z, right, in the columns. So I'm going to just go ahead and create a data table and then a graph based on uh, growing plants in my Bio2 class. So every graph has a y-axis that's vertical and an x-axis, right, that is horizontal. And so both need to be labeled and you should have a chart title and I'll show you all of that. So I'm going to start in column A. This is what's going to be along my x-axis. So this is going to be um, days of plant growth. So I'm going to label that here. And I'm going to drag it over because I'm OCD and I do not like it crossing over. So days of plant growth go as the label. So it is the first box in the first column. And that will be the label of my X axis. And then I start my growing was when I planted seeds. So that starts on day zero is when I planted my seed. And I go from there. Nine, we'll, we'll just say I grew plants for nine days, although I know we did 16. Then columns B, C, D, E, F, those are going to be each plant or each type of object right, that goes in your graph that you tested. Maybe, uh, for example, you tested the different types of Play-Doh. So each type of Play-Doh would go into each column here. Um, if you tested different chemicals, the different chemicals would go here. Uh, maybe you tested different detergents. Maybe you tested, you know, different light bulbs, stuff like that. So I'm starting out with plant number one. And I'm going to say that it started out and it didn't grow at all. Poor guy, didn't even germinate. Plant number two, however, took a while to germinate. But then I noticed it started growing. Then plant number three... did really well. Okay. And it took no time to germinate. It germinated within a day or two. In this case, it germinated within the first 24 hours. That's a great plant, All right? So that is my data table that I am now going to for instance, I would copy and paste this onto my Google slide or my worksheet. Okay, so if you wanted to make the table, go there. I'm going to hit the boxes and I'm going to make sure all the boxes are filled in, right? Just like that. And that's what I'm going to copy and paste onto my Google slide or my worksheet lab report for data. So I copy and paste that. Now, to get to the chart, I hit this insert chart and that's going to create my original graph so right now it's a line graph okay and maybe you don't want it to be a line graph here i'm going to move myself up top nope i'm going to towards the middle here so notice i'm under chart editor it's under setup maybe i want to do a bar graph instead so i click bar graph or column chart and so that has changed it, right? So maybe I want a bar graph or column chart instead of a line graph. Then I notice, right? So I've got integers of zero to nine here, it looks like, um, for nine days, days of plant growth. So zero through nine. But notice I have no vertical title. And then my overall title is plant one, two, three. I do not like that. So I'm going to come over here to customize and I'm going to chart axis and title. My chart title, I'm going to get rid of 
plant one, two, and three. I'm going to name it biology plant growth project, right? And that immediately changes over here. And a title, we need to make sure it's capitalized, of course. So, uh, of course, so I am going to capitalize those just because of my OCD. Then I click in here. I know I have a horizontal title, but I need a vertical axis, the Y axis title. And so I'm going to put growth of plants in centimeters. Because remember, in science, we use the metric system to measure. And so notice that has now added growth of plants in centimeters. Okay. So if I want a trend line, I could add that if I wanted to. So it puts a trend line. That's up to you. Okay. Maybe I need different axes, uh, different numbering of the axis, right? Maybe I need to show an axis line. That's up to you. Um, but what I can do is I can change the border here. Right. If I want a background color, maybe I'm doing baby blue. That's fine if I keep it wide text. If I want to make it 3D, right, all of a sudden it made my chart 3D. Okay, I can go back to setup and under plant one, switch rows and columns. No, I'm okay. Use column as labels. We'll keep that. My data points are still highlighted. And I go back to customize. Those look to be all okay here. Okay. I can change the text color here. If I wanted red for the vertical axis. Right. Chart subtitle. I don't want to add one of those, but. All right, so you can play around with this. Make them different colors, right? You can change the color of these. If you do not want them yellow, you can change the color here. Okay. So maybe I want it to be green and instead of red, maybe I want purple, you know, something like that. And that zero, even you could change that zero number in the overall grid lines. Okay. Uh, so then once I'm good with my chart, this is what I'm going to copy and paste into my either PowerPoint or project, and you're going to enlarge it. So that way I, your classmates or uh, the judges can see it from a distance. Maybe you want to increase the text here, right? Because this is a little small. So you want to increase the text size. I would, um, if not, change the font so it, it's more bold and it stands out more. Okay. And that's what you will copy and paste into your PowerPoint or lab report, something like that. So if you have questions about that, please make sure you contact me. Um, so that way I can help you out. Okay, that summarizes how to insert the data table and chart into your project. Have a good day.